pleased to present Austin Faith Dialogue, brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries. In the weeks ahead, you will see these and other programs by various denominations. Dialogue, a public affairs program at the crossroads of religion and life, a series highlighting the cultural and social interaction between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTVC. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. A relatively new profession has emerged in the religious community to work alongside the clergy, educators, youth directors, and secretaries. Many congregations are now turning to a business administrator to oversee the care of facilities, financial, and membership records. There's a national chapter of, there's a national association of church business administrators, and here in Austin, there's a chapter that brings together administrators from a variety of denominations and faith traditions. I'm Barbara Holmes on the staff of St. John's United Methodist Church, welcoming you to this edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. This weekly religious public affairs program is brought to you by Austin Metropolitan Ministries. Join me now as we meet today's guest who help manage ministry as full-time church business administrators. And I'd like to introduce to you Dan Garner on the staff at Hyde Park Baptist. Mary Lou Snowden, the business manager at uh, Unity Church of Austin, and Arita Kelberg, assistant business administrator at First United Methodist. We've had a chance to visit, and I'm, I'm fascinated by what I'm learning, so we'd like to learn a little more about you all and the work that you do that help churches and congregations. And let's start with you, Dan. How long have you been the business, I believe the title is business coordinator at Hyde Park Baptist. <clears throat> yes, ma'am, 14 and a half years, and I've loved every minute of it. <laughs> and there's never a, a, the day is different every day. <laughs> I bet that's true. Has, are you the first person to fill that position, or have there been others? No, I'm the first, first one. The other duties had been shared by other ministers before I came. And you are full-time, so that oversight of facilities and financial management and records. Seven days a week. <laughs> That's right. In this position, I guess there would be responsibilities. There's no such thing as a 40-hour week. School and uh, daycare and church on Sunday and weddings on Saturday, so it's, it's full-time. Well, now, Mary Lou, you're a business administrator. Have you always worked in uh, the field of uh, the church setting? No, I haven't. I'm relatively new to church business administration. I was a business manager with the YMCA's for several years and then in private industry. So you've had experience in uh, for-profit and not-for-profit yes. both. And some of your duties include what? I oversee the staff of the church, all the clerical and support staff, the bookkeeping and accounting function, um, space planning, grounds and property. It deals with almost everything that is not the ministry. Well, 
but it's helping the ministry and is it as consuming would you describe it as a seven day a week job yes i'm there every sunday and maybe one saturday a month for special functions and then of course during the week the office is open from nine to five regular office hours. right and a lot of evening <sighs> Well, now, Dan, you said uh, that position had existed for 14 years. Irita, how long has the church business administrator position existed at First United Methodist? Uh, the position has been in existence for 12 years. And how did you arrive at this career? Well, actually, I had been in the for-profit business and accepted it as a challenge and a chance really to use accounting skills in a more professional setting. Well, the three of you represent very different faith traditions, and yet the needs are a great deal the same, obviously, because they've employed someone to take care of those needs. Dan, you've been at this for some time. What would you say are some indications when a congregation would really benefit from the services of a business manager? Probably when the pastor or somebody else in the staff is finding they're tied down more to a telephone or a desk and, and they're not able to go out to the hospital or visit new folks to Austin and, and then it's time to get some help in the areas of administration and finances and building maintenance. <laughs> and probably you could just keep naming keep the naming, things. Right. Well, related to that, Mary Lou, how would you describe business manager's general responsibility. We've talked about financial, record keeping of finances and mm -hmm. membership, and yes. what are some other things? The membership and the record keeping, also all of the uh, newsletters, bulletins, all the publications of the church. Oh. Contribution records, and as Dan mentioned, grounds and building maintenance. It takes a lot of time. I would guess there's also some personnel management yes, in there. Yes, supervising whatever the staff is in your particular church, the clerical staff and the accounting staff. Well, as you com work on these tasks, Irita, what have you found is a continual headache that keeps coming up over and over? Is there one thing that bugs you more than anything else? I, I would suppose that building maintenance um, is probably the one that reoccurs the most and of course there's always because my responsibilities lie a lot in the area of finance there's always of course cash flow and uh, I, I suppose that's really our I'm too. sure keeping up with a building by the time you think of doors and locks and plumbing and lawns and parking that the, it it's just always something Mary Lou, what do you find that that's, would you describe your <laughs> continuing problem is pretty much the same? Yes, um, meeting that budget every month is always interesting. Unexpected things pop up and challenge us. Um, I think that time planning is a lot too. We have um, a lot of activities, space requirements, that kind of thing, and planning my time as well as the time that the church is going to be used. So personal time management as mm -hmm. a supervisor, but use of the facilities. Yes. You're always having to deal with some group wanting to right. use this and it's right. been scheduled or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Dan, what would you add to that? Are you pro I guess the, the cash flow is pretty much a reality that that's, that's always there, but would you add anything else to that? Well, I think, you know, knowing how to uh, to manage that money if there's a roof you do you have a nest egg somewhere to, to pay for that roof that needs to be fixed and then the space management is a demanding time for weddings or funerals or whatever and some other group might want to use it and you have to learn to share and to, to work things out so. oh that may call for some <clears throat> diplomacy i wouldn't mm -hmm. say that the things that you are not doing are not pastoral <laughs> because i bet there's some uh some pretty delicate uh diplomatic things you have to do uh, well, as I think about the tremendous amount of record keeping, membership, financial records, uh, Mary Lou, I'm assuming that these days an office is computerized. What sort of an impact has computers had on your work? We are able to give our donors um, ad accurate records of all their giving 
and we are able to separate our funds, our building fund, our scholarship fund, our ongoing general fund, our youth funds, can all be separated very easily. Um, we also use computers for our newsletters, bulletins, mailing lists. Mailing lists is a biggie. Membership lists. Um, it's been, a, I think that before that, churches were not able to give their people as much. Respond to any right. inquiries. Right. Well, Irita, have you all found at First Methodist that you were able to just buy some off-the-shelf computer programs that met your needs, or did all of this have to be designed to fit a church? Actually, we bought some software and then modified it to fit the church. The stewardship program we used just as we purchased it, uh, but then we developed attendance programs and specialized reports. So you have some sort of a tracking for uh, attendance also that's done through the computer? Yes, both, both membership and then specialized Sunday school classes. Is that a task? Do you keep up with attendance and the membership in that way? Yes, ma'am. Most of our Sunday school teachers want to know who's absent, send out postcards, and they want to know the next Monday morning who was absent and a mailing list to mail them a, a get well card or tell them they were missed. And then also we use computers at our church and other churches in Austin to, to maintain the lights, to turn them on and off, or air conditioners. Oh, programming electronic. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. Uh, what sort of a bank of computers do you have? Just one computer that has access to all of our air handlers and uh, lights and that type of thing. So we have separate computers for different functions. Well, now, uh, how about the programming that you use? Did uh, someone had to design those programs for the timing, right? Um, in our case, we bought some that were on the shelf and then modified them to fit our needs. Well, that's interesting that the industry is looking at the church as a consumer market and has things out there to fit that need. In talking about computers, uh, Dan, I was interested by the fact that for the first time last spring, you pulled together a course on church management that was taught through Austin Community College. Now, how did that come about? I found that through the Austin chapter of our church business administrators, there were so many times we all had questions, and I thought, well, wouldn't it be good if we all just got together and, and answered these questions and talked about them? And so then we decided, well, let's just develop a course for about six nights, and, and uh, the Austin Community Co College agreed to host that, and we've done three courses like that. Oh, there have been three. We've had three, yes, ma'am. And they made their facilities available. Right. And you said night. Mm -hmm. We meet uh, Tuesday night for six weeks for a three-hour period. And even though I'm the instructor, each person contributes, and I learn just as much as the next person. Well, when you say each person, uh, what sort of attendance in the three courses that you've had so far? We've had pastors, music directors, uh, just lay per people, and church uh, secretaries, church business administrators. What size does the class run? We've had between 30 and 40 people, and then we've gone out to the different churches and visited on site and learned how their church uh, handled a particular problem. Or We've been to Mary Lou's church and Irita's church. Well, that on-site probably would be helpful looking at the equipment and the setup and the traffic flow and that kind of thing. Now, if I understand, both of you all have attended that course. And Mary Lou, uh, I know you speak very glowingly of it, but what were some of the things in that course that were most helpful to you? I found that the part on church growth was very helpful because we, that's where we are. We're in an expansion program, and we are outgrowing our present facilities. And um, right after I finished the class, we, I was asked to work up a congregational survey of needs, and I went right to my book <laughs> and really found all the resources that I needed to work up a good congregational survey. And the church growth, also the, um, the part on taxes, it's different for churches, definitely. And that was very good. Actually, all of it was good. I went through the agenda to see what stood out the most in my mind and all of it stood out in my mind but visiting the other churches was very informative 
Well, now, Irita, did you attend the course also? Uh, yes, I did. W were, w did it happen to be the same one, or were you there at different times? Uh, no, I attended the first one that Dan did. And as someone coming into the field relatively new, did you find that very helpful? Yes, I did. Um, there were... As dif I differ from Mary Lou on the ones that I found. I like the church policy, uh, the developing of the church policy, developing of the church budget uh, was a very useful section. Um, of course, the tax review was good, uh, always changing taxes each year. Uh, so it sounds like the cu curriculum was really very comprehensive. Dan, did you compile or pull mm -hmm. that curriculum Pretty together? much after just questions that people had called on the phone, and I'd remembered this is something that people are interested in and need help. And we even had a final exam, and everybody passed. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a great teacher to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it has been that popular, are there plans to continue the course? Uh, we'll have another one in uh, the fall and the spring, an advanced course coming up in the spring of 1990. An advanced meaning further uh, details about finances or the tax tax implications on churches and probably looking into insurance for churches and uh, and how to work with different committees and the boards and other staff members. So uh, relationships as well. The very important part, I'm, right? I'm sure. As uh, Dan brought some books that he has used, not only some in the course using for text, but to illustrate that there's quite a few resources available. And uh, when you said working with committees, here is one developing a church policy manual, use of building, uh, all of the various policies, personnel. And we will compile a list of these so that if viewers should want to know specifically the name, are these two available in bookstores readily? Uh, most of them are, uh huh. Through Baptist bookstores or here in Austin at Ministries for Christ has some of these books. Well, we'll get a list so that if someone called interested in those, and uh -huh. we'll need to put also how one might register for the course, because we may get some inquiries about that. Yeah. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit in the introduction. I mentioned the National Association for Church Business Managers, and Irita, what do you know about that organization? Well, I think basically the reason that it started was the need for to get people coming together from the various denominations to discuss mutual problems, challenges, um, all of the, and, and to provide a place where you had a centralized literature bank, so to speak, that if you had a particular problem, you had a national organization you could go to for, for these things. Are they looking at some sort of certification, or is that part of the organization? Actually, this came out uh, after the organization was formed. This was one of the things that um, they worked on and provided the certification to church business administrators. And here in Austin, there's an organization, a chapter affiliated with that. Mary Lou, how long have you been the president now? Oh, just one month. Oh Elections my. are in June. <laughs> so that uh, you're just starting yes. your term of presidency. Mm -hmm. What do you know about the history of the organization here in Austin? How did it happen to get affiliated with the National and a need for it? It started here in June 1982, seven years. Mm -hmm. And I believe Dan's been in it since the beginning, haven't you? Yes, ma'am, right. That's what I thought. And um, they have approximately 20, between 20 and 30 attendees at every meeting, and we share not only problems, but a lot of support, a lot of fellowship. We have very good speakers that are recommended by the various members, and we cover most areas that we feel church business administrators are interested in. And it's also given us an avenue, like Irita was saying, when you have a question, you know people that you can pick up the phone and call. And it really helps to have, it's like a support group in a lot of ways. And you can work on your concerns by sharing with someone else and found how they mm -hmm. have dealt with that. Uh, how would one become, if they were interested in attending, 
is would they call you as the president? Mm -hmm. They oh. could call any, actually any member church and find out what we have about uh, luncheons on the third Thursday of every month. And you have a newsletter and uh, you have an educational aspect whenever you get together. Yes, we do. So if you were interested in learning more about taxes, maybe you'd try to get someone from mm -hmm. the IRS out there. Mm -hmm. um, well, as you look at what that means to people that are working in the church, in the business, Dan, did you feel that was something that ought to be covered in the course? Did, did they have an opportunity to learn about the organization? Uh, right, we did share that, that, and we had some people that were in the course that said, hey, I'd like to come and, and meet with you, and then we've had a lot of, of people come to the uh, monthly luncheons that just have heard about some particular subject and wanted to come, and they might just be laymen in the church that wanted to, in, in any church, in any faith. I guess that it is really a very ecumenical group. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Baptist, Unity, United Methodist represented here, and I'm sure others also, but when people are interested in the subject that you're having for that month, what are some, Mary Lou, what are some programs that you've had that have been uh, well attended? Wayne Matthews did a program for us on um, writing newsletters, uh, the typesetting, using PageMaker. We had a tremendous That's a turnout. That's a computer program? Yes, it Page is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we had a very large turnout for that because most of the churches are trying to get that in-house on their computers because of cost of typesetting and also the control factor you aren't under such a time deadline when you're doing it in-house yourself and that was very well attended um, also what were some of our more recent ones that had we've had the austin police come and yes. talk to us about safety and churches and when people leave churches, you know, how to protect yourself. Well, and security in churches themselves mm -hmm. is a real problem because of break-ins. Uh, uh, We've had people in the insurance industry and in estate planning, wills. And your job responsibility covers those things. So, Mary Lou, you're at Unity Church of Austin, and that's how someone would reach you if they wanted to find out mm -hmm. more about that. Correct. The third Thursday of the month. Right. Well, in that course, Dan, were the people that attended that all business managers or were some pastors, were some doing one little bit of management, or what were some of your students doing in the ministry of the church? Several of our people that attended the course were pastors. We had some music directors, education people. There were a few business administrators. And then I guess probably half of them were just people that were volunteers in a church and might ha happen to have been the church treasurer or maybe they were a chairman of the building and grounds committee and had some area of interest that they wanted to help their own church. So it would be appropriate for a person that was never thinking about being a business manager but wanted to learn more about some aspect of it to attend that six-week course. It would help them, right, just to help their own church. And it was a sharing of ideas from all faiths. And, and like we said, we would go and visit a church and there might be some idea that another church had that would apply to their church. In the course you visited churches, but didn't you say uh, when we were visiting that the association meets in different churches mm -hmm. so you get to see uh, the various settings, which makes a lot of difference, a growing situation, a downtown. Right. Um, Dan, what do you think that the future for people who are interested in church administration as a career. Do you see that possibly continuing or what factors might affect that? Probably there will be more emphasis in uh, seminaries and colleges on, in this field. Like for instance, Baylor University is probably starting to offer more courses in this and seminaries uh, uh, helping people find that this is a career field that, that have interest in church uh, work but might not be called to be a full-time pastor. I see. So uh, getting that as a career option to people fairly early in their decision-making. That's right. Uh -huh. Well, I would be interested to know, since the both of you have worked in settings other than the church, how you would feel about 
Mary Lou, how would you say your work in the for-profit world differs from the work that you do in the church? It's management, but it's different. It's management. The church work is much more people-oriented. It's like most service organizations, but you are working with the people in the congregation, on the board, on the committees. There's a lot of people work. Um, the emphasis is not on the bottom line. The emphasis is more on service. Well, now, you're, you're kind of contradicting what you all said. I guess what you said, the cash flow problem, th that's a headache for you. Mm -hmm. But you try to take care of that problem so the members don't have to and that they that's can correct. be about ministry. That's correct. <laughs> Irita, what would you say some of the differences you've noted uh, in working in the business world and the church? I, I would have to say again the people the communication with people the caring the sharing um, it's it's entirely different than you're doing something for someone and helping develop programs and classes things things for people well, it sounds to me as if you're saying you feel you're very much a part of the ministry. Even the headaches of uh, <laughs> the facilities and personnel, didn't all of you say that you had personnel management in your job description? That's very time consuming. Uh, what is your least unfavorite thing, Dan? I guess payroll problems oh. sometimes. <laughs> if there's an argument about how many hours maybe somebody worked or something and you you like in a church work to try to 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 go with the person and then also there's a lot of sadness in, in working with people and we deal with that a lot too mm -hmm. again the relationships that you talked about you don't uh, tr treat them impersonally you but you care a great deal you have to care about every person that's right mm -hmm. and i guess you all are the payroll officers in your situation <laughs> well I hope that things go well for you because that's a very demanding task. And congratulations, Mary Lou, on the presidency. I'm sure that there will be some informative programs, and uh, I will invite you to have one of your meetings. Come out to St. John's. You've probably been to these other churches. Wonderful. So we're deeply grateful to you for being our guest today, and I'm sure the viewers have learned a lot about what church business managers do. And if you participate in the life of a congregation you may simply take it for granted that when you arrive the equipment is going to be operating the facilities are going to be clean and there's going to be adequate supplies but you may not know what the church manager has done so that the operation runs smoothly and that ministry happens thank you for joining us today you're invited to be with us again next week for another austin faith dialogue good day Metropolitan Ministries at 472-7627.